So you guys, real life, spiders kill them, like them, run away from them? Uh, me personally, I, I, I would say I think they're cool and I wouldn't kill them. I would, uh, I have a, I have a, a deal with insects. Uh, I won't mess with you, but if you enter my domain, uh, no, you're, you're, you're toast. So, I would say that's kind of the same for me. Yeah, yeah totally. But, <laughs> but I do, I do like spiders and, you know, I think they do a lot of good by killing other insects that I, that I dislike even more. So I, I, they get spared a little bit more. If I can get them out, I will. But, uh, but you know, I, I've, I've been known to do the horrible, terrible things with spiders. I, I, I have. So. I have a neighbor who says they're the wolves of the insect world and we should respect them. <laughs> nice. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. From that perspective. Yeah, yeah. He's he's PETA vegan, all that stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> PETA vegan. Claire, where, what's your relationship? Um, I I subscribe to Mike's philosophy a little bit. I'll shuffle them out. You know, I prefer not to you know squish them or whatever. So yeah, I'll shuffle them out. But you know, if if they're a poisonous one and they're yeah. infringing on my territory, then they gotta go. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got So now, why make a movie about a big ass spider? I don't know. Why? Why not? Really? What inspired uh, the idea? Do you want to take that one, or what? Uh, what, what, what the genesis was? Uh, genesis was about uh, two years ago. Shaked and I were uh, meeting with uh, one of our distributors, and he was like, "You guys, you know, you're doing all these movies. You guys should do a giant creature feature." And we're like, great, like what kind of creature? And he's like, I don't know, just make a great creature feature. And it's actually so started with like, Nazi zombies. Oh, Nazi zombies. He was like, you have to make Nazi zombies. zombies. <laughs> like, no, Nazi zombies. Yeah, exactly. like, oh, okay, so maybe a creature. creature movie, that's true. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but we didn't know what the creature was, we didn't know what the story was, and uh, we, we went back, we started going through all the different categories snakes and sharks and a uh, butterfly at one point, and, and, and anything, anything we could think of, and then we both kind of were like, you know, we really should make a spider. That's cool. It's creepy. Everybody hates spiders. Nobody's made a really great giant spider movie, and um, we kind of got hooked on that. And so originally, though, the idea was to make it a much more serious movie, and to kind of like make a, an art, not an artistic, but like a serious, creepy uh, creature feature with music. Yes. No, no music. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, we, we talked to a writer friend of ours uh, who we've done a bunch of projects with, and he was like, you know what? You guys should actually make it funny. You know, it's like, don't try and make something bigger and better than the studio can do or whatever. Don't try to make the Transformer or Spiders. Just make a fun movie so that when people are laughing, you know, they can kind of go along for the ride. And, um, you know, we just kind of came to him, and then. It just kind of evolved from there. But and then how is it balancing that comma, that comedy, and actually, you know, having a suspenseful film too, without it feeling like silly? Because I was really surprised. Like you hear a title like "Big Ass Spider" and you go in expecting something very specific, and I was surprised with the first like forty minutes of the film. Like you actually are invested in the characters. But that, that's a lot of credit to Mike because he was he was really. Getting a range, I think, with everything, uh, everything that he was doing as the actors. Well, I, I like creepy, you know. I like scary. I like to scare. Th uh, two things I like to do: I like to scare people. I like to make people laugh. And if I can find a way to do them both, uh, I like that. And and again, um, you know, something I said earlier today, or I always say, is that you know, you always want to play to your strengths, especially when you're dealing with a limited budget. And it doesn't cost anything to make anybody laugh, and it doesn't cost anything to make people jump. Uh, you know, so so if you kind of like sort of focus on that, it, it uh, you know it can happen you know I, somewhat organically. The other thing is I really like like movies like uh, Adam Cassell meet Frankenstein, uh, and uh, you know back then like you know that was kind of the deal. When when you're with Adam Costello, it's funny. They're they're goofy, they're dopey. They they have their their you know their chemistry and, and the comedy. But when Frankenstein comes out, it's completely played straight. He's a monster. He's deadly. They're running from him, and so that was sort of the fun of it. In like I I you know and I don't want to. Generalize other movies, but I think often in other like creature feature type things, everyone's sort of on the same page and taking this like totally ridiculous and impossible situation seriously. And so it was sort of like, no, I want you know them to be kind of reacting the way a normal person would, would react, as going like, "Were well, you kidding me? What?" You know, and be kind of bumbling through it. And everyone else in the movie is taking it seriously, you know. And so the spider's always serious, the military's uh, you know always serious, and they're always funny. And now going back to the financing thing, like it doesn't cost anything to scare people and to make them laugh, but it most certainly does to make a big CGI spider. So like, especially as a producer, like how do you go go into that? Are you like red flagging like every other thing in that script? Um, well, yeah, I mean, you do, you, 
the bottom line is yes. You uh, the cool thing about I want to say the cool thing about making an independent film as opposed to a studio is that you do a lot. You are you are allowed to let it evolve sort of organically and a little bit more naturally than in a studio system. So uh, we did have a bit of a, a, a we kind of went for a structure. We wanted to make it move really quickly, and uh, we wanted people to keep keep people engaged really like from the very beginning and keep them involved the whole way through. But uh, you know, Mike really I give him a lot of credit. He he kind of brought his own spin on it and brought his own tone and brought his own perspective on it. And then when the cast came on board, they brought their, they had a lot of their own lines and they developed the characters. So it was, it started with, you know, a, a bit of a blueprint, but it really, from, from where it started to where it ended up, it, there was no kind of set plan. And it, it uh, I think that's why the, the movie is kind of as fun as it is because everybody was able to give their creative input along the way. And I definitely wanted to say something as far as like, you know, you know, it does cost money to, you know, create, to d destroy a city. You, you'll be surprised. Technology's in an amazing place right now. And, and this, you know, I, I would always have friends, you know, that were like, man, I want to make a movie and, and whatever. And I was like, just pick up a camera and go make a movie. And, uh, you know, it, it was a, a, a long time since my previous film, Grave Dancers, it was at like a long period. And I was kind of like, you know, I need to take my own advice and I just need to, to get a movie done. And so I just had this kind of, theory and obviously working with the effects company they really pushed it to another level of like wait no i mean let's just see how far we can take this with with the with the availability of digital technology the way it is with the advancements of digital effects uh you can do a lot on your own and you can do a lot that doesn't require a lot of money because really you know, especially in this digital realm, it, it technically really doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You're talking still about just time and talent, you know? And if you if you have someone who's talented that's willing to put in the time, it's not really expensive. So some of the biggest, you know, destruction scenes were shot in an afternoon, long after, you know, or a week or two after production had wrapped, and it was uh, like us with a 5D camera walking around downtown going, oh, wouldn't it be cool if it like like jumped on that building and then maybe stuff fell? And so we literally would just, you know, whip the camera to the building and then go down and then like follow it out. You know, nothing was there, of course. And then like, you know, and again, you start, start getting spoiled. We had this, uh, you know, uh, uh, effects coordinator named Asif, and we'd kind of go like, Asif! <laughs> Put the put the spider there, and then put helicopters there, and make that building fall. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so, but to his credit, though, he was always like, "Okay, I'll do it." Yeah, I never, I never was like, and the thing you was, he, pushing it. No, like, that's know. the thing. He would go like, "Hmm, but no, but then how about have helicopters come here, and then uh, you know, then how about how about the you know, it crushes somebody there?" And I'm like, "Yes, I like the way you're thinking. Yes. Uh, kill more people, yes." Uh, and so, so uh, um, yeah, no, so, so that that was sort of the thing. What was like, you know, as I always say, is kind of. My my mantra on this whole thing is like when I was a kid I used to make movies with my friends and just just do it in the backyard and I just felt where technology was today let's apply that same idea bring our friends together uh, bring you know the our available equipment and just just see how far we can take it and that's what we did so how much of what we see in the final product is actually physically there and practical because based on what you just described like I was originally thinking you know the spiders crawling on the building you might have to like create all of that in a create CGI environments, really? Is uh, it all real? It's, it's, it's combination. Other than the it's combination. Sometimes it was a, a completely digital building. Sometimes it was uh, literally, and a lot of it, a lot of the big destruction sequences are, are just, if we went da into downtown Austin right here and just, you know, took a shot of the convention center and just tilt it up and pan to the left, it's just like, all right, add the destruction, add, add you know, put some flaming cars down there, put some helicopters up there, have it hop up, put some, you know, and, and that's it, you know, and, and so honestly, some of the most elaborate, bigger shots were shot in five minutes. Is there any one that was the most challenging of all? Uh, I'm trying to think, well, you know, uh, uh, let me just say from a, from a, from a, from a digital uh, point of view, I'm sure there are a lot of shots were, were challenging, <laughs> but of course that were, that wasn't our problem. <laughs> but uh, but uh, um, no, but but the the opening of the movie, uh, which you know I really wanted to be kind of this really visually arresting kind of like you know something that makes you go whoa what the hell am I watching? Um, you know it's amazing how much stuff was not there. I mean literally it was our actor Greg Grunberg walking on an empty street and a bunch of my friends just running. And that's it. And then every piece of rubble you see on the ground is digital. And all the smoke, all the cars, uh, everything was digital. And so it's amazing if you look like at the before and after kind of thing of what the clean plate is to what the effects are. I mean, it's nine day. It's just like, you know, it's really incredible. So. Uh, yeah, I gotta, say, I gotta say one of the best feelings I, I had 
was watching that scene with Greg when I actually saw it for the first time. And we were, I think we were all like, yeah. fingers yeah. crossed, we have no idea what we're getting here. And then we saw, I saw it for the first time and I was like, it was just like, I felt so good when I saw it. I was like, this looks so good. Yeah. So, so far beyond what we expected. But I think one of the biggest challenges was actually the ending because we had a, a spider that was about five or seven stories high. And we tried to figure out how, you know, our hero is going to kill it and how that, you know, man to man fight in the end, which I think was something that we spent a lot of discussion. Well, and no, that, that a lot of toys that we tried to like yeah, play totally. with at, at Mike's apartment. That, but... that was challenging <laughs> on so many levels because, because it wasn't, we, we didn't honestly have the time in the, in the schedule to really shoot that properly. And so we piecemealed things in between other, we were doing other scenes and while they were setting up, we would go to a street, so, and all different streets. Sometimes we were in a parking lot, sometimes we were in the actual street, sometimes we were in a street that kind of looked like that. Uh, and and really, it's so embarrassing. Really, most of that end thing with, you know, uh, Greg versus the spider is just Greg or his double, like, running around doing this, you know? And, we did, and, and I would just be going like, like, it's leg kicked, it spit acid, duck! And, and, and I'm sure Greg must have been going like, what? I get it. <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, sorry, bleep that out. Uh, and, and so uh, you know, and and that was a, a huge challenge, both from a, you know an editing point of view of like all these fragmented pieces that some second unit stuff we did, uh, like two different DPs over several days to kind of piece the sequence together. Um, you know, and then, and then one day we brought you out, and I think we were just kind of running on a Have skateboard or something yeah. like that. <laughs> you, you know, uh, to do the bazooka, and, and then and then. Again, we basically piece this thing together of like, okay, this kind of makes sense, and then like, all right, now just add a giant spider to it, you know? <laughs> and they did, you know? Yeah, they did. They did a great job because actually, sequence uh, people go like, wow, that looks so cool, you know? And it's like, yeah, I don't know how. That's a miracle. <laughs> Can you guys tell me a little bit about approaching it from an actor's perspective? Like, when the script comes your way, I mean, do you look at it and be like, oh, this is a meaty role I could really dive into, or just like, this looks like a ton of fun and I want to do it for that reason? You want to go first? Go for it, go ahead. Okay, well, Ladies I mean, first, I... <laughs> thank you, Lombardo. Um, I had worked with Mike before, so I was, you know, when he first called me, I obviously you know, enjoyed working with him on Grave Dancer, so I was excited to see what he was talking about. And I think, actually, I may have committed to the project before I read the script. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, think <laughs> I said, hey, do you want to go be my new movie? And yeah. Like, sure. And, and then you're like, we start Tuesday, and I'm like, oh, okay. I felt like um, I had asked, I like asked you after Homecoming or yeah, something. Yeah, I was like, homecoming. okay, and like, yeah. I'll do it. Um, so, you know, that was the first thing for me, was I knew I was in good hands with Mike. Um, and then when I read the script, the character, I play Lieutenant Carly Bryant, and she, um, you know, obviously is different, if you're familiar at all with any of the roles I've played, very different from any of the characters I've played. Usually I play a very, you know, uh, either a loud evil person or a victim, and she was kind of like right in the middle. She was very human and, you know, set in her ways, so that was interesting to me as well, but then once I got on set, really the appeal of the project became the community, the, you know, artistic sort of community that was created between these guys, you know, who as producers were just awesome and especially awesome to Mike and and Mike who was in turn great to the actors. So there wasn't it, there wasn't a lot of like for me at least with this project there wasn't a lot of thinking. It wasn't a difficult role. It was a fun role. It was a fun environment. So it was awesome. I loved it, man. Please. No, it was great. Greg, uh, Greg called me up and he was in the car with Mike and he's like, hey man, let's do a spider movie. Bleep. Anyways, <laughs> so we were like, so, and then we talked about it and we got together with Mike and then we went through the script and then like, He's checking me out. He only wanted to make sure I had a mustache because we're, we're shooting soon. <laughs> so that's so what he asked Greg. He's like, does he have a mustache? <laughs> well, I remember, I think, I, I don't remember, I think I first talked to you on the phone, right? And, uh -huh. you, and you were like, I have a lot of ideas for the character, Matt. He should be really afraid of bugs. And I, for some reason, you know, thought he, you were saying dogs. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the phone. And, and, and he's like, he like, I'm sorry? He's like, you know, he should be afraid of bugs. And, and, I, and I was like, like, yeah, yeah, he could be afraid of dogs. You told me he's like, dog, he's like, no man, bugs. <laughs> and then you're like, bugs. no bugs. And then he's like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm like, you know, that's kind of funny. Which is funny for me too. I, was, I really wanted uh, to work on the accent. I had a neighbor who's from Mexico, 
And he's also the guy that's, you know, told me about the spiders and stuff, Fernando. So he's funny. So he's kind of a mix of Fernando and my brother-in-law, who's like a mechanic who came here and started, you know, from washing cars to now he's like one of the top Nissan master technicians, you know. And he's a good man, hardworking, you know, has a really strong accent. You know, he's lived here forever, but he'll probably never go away. You know what I mean? So that, that for me was it. And I wanted him to, to have heart, you know what I mean? And, and just kind of be the hero and not be scared and kick butt. And me and Greg, I mean, I love Greg Grumberg, so we get along great. And I thought our chemistry was, was great. You know, we, we, that's the way we joke around in real life. So it was just fun to get up there and do it on the mm -hmm. screen. As people who seemingly just kind of like came together and jumped in feet first to make what they wanted to make, do you have like any advice for someone out there who's kind of on the border of jumping into maybe even their first feature? Just dive in. I mean, do, do your research, do your homework, figure out what's the best way to do it. But I mean, there's no better film school than just making films and it's more accessible than ever. Now, but you know, there, there's, a, there's a pro and con to it. There's the, the pro, it's easier than ever. The con is, is there's more competition, there's there's more people doing it, so now it really kind of levels the playing field of it's about imagination, it's about ability, and it's about, you know, being able to pull stuff off, but, you know, the tools are there, so if you if you can't find a, a, a way to do it, that's your problem, because, you know, it can be done.